Hi guys, this is Charles. I'm one of the surgeons at South Falls. Um, welcome back. Uh, it's been a few weeks since my last confession, <laughs> since my last surgery. Um, and today we're doing a really interesting case, which is a subcutaneous hemangiosarcoma that was resected previously with incomplete margins. And we've done a CT scan and there's a large mass deep to the incision. So we've got the incision here. Um, and then there's a large mass in the popliteal region, uh, which is contrast enhancing. And I'm not sure if that's tumor or, or more popliteal lymph node or what it is, but we're going in, removing the whole scar as if this was a uh, de novo tumor. And then uh, also going in and removing that mass that's between the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus muscles. So, um, uh, anyway, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so that you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. Um, can I please get a ligature? And we'll get that turned on as well. Let's go ahead and make our initial incision here. Um, and Jess, I'll also need some number four gelpies, please. So when you're recutting a surgical scar, it doesn't matter where it was dirty. Like even if they told you it was dirty at one end of the incision, you have to make sure you recut the whole surgical scar as if the whole thing was contaminated um, because technically it is. Um, so when you have a recurrence of a tumor, often you'll have recurrence along the whole previous incision, not just in the area uh, where, it was, where it was dirty. Just a quick question about our sterilized Sharpies and how we do that. Um, so sterilized Sharpies, we're very fortunate to have ethylene oxide here. You can also plasma gas sterilize them. Those are the only two ways that I know of. Can we get cautery plugged in, please? Those are the only two ways that I know of uh, to sterilize Sharpies. Um, you can also buy pre-sterilized skin markers uh, that are used more for human plastic surgery um, kind of thing. Um, but the Sharpies are, uh, are, number one, they're cheap. Number two, they mark the skin really well. They're less likely to get rubbed away by alcohol on the skin or anything like that. Now, for those of you that are watching, um, the twitching that we're getting is from direct muscle stimulation not from the dog being awake. I always get complaints about that from lay people that are watching. Interested, um, particularly now with current events, where everybody is watching from and how things are going with respect to quarantines and things like that and how it's affected your veterinary business. We haven't seen much effect here other than the precautions that we're taking. So this is the saphenous vein right here um, that we will sacrifice. So this is a subcutaneous hemangiosarcoma, previously excised with dirty margins. And when we did a CT scan, we found a large mass in the space between the semimembranosus and semitendinosus, which we don't know whether it's extension of the tumor or if it's uh, popliteal lymph node or what it is, but uh, we're going in to take it out. So cutting through a bit of, I believe this would be biceps femoris that I'm cutting through up here. There's 
Yeah. So probably from the previous surgery. Gelpi retractor in here. I actually zoom this in a little bit if I can. I'm in Texas and I'm university class of being moved online. High school slides in Arizona. That's a great view right there. So this is gastroc muscle sitting right here. I'm trying to steer clear of that tumor. I can feel it within this tissue right here. And I can see some little kind of hematoma kind of things, which may actually be hemangiosarcomas right along that fascial plane there. Do you change your cautery settings at all? Um, I don't. It's a good question as to whether I change the cautery settings when I get down to muscle. I do not change them. Um, if I'm getting a lot of twitching, you might lower your settings a little bit, but... I am trying to get a little bit of a margin around. Um, around the tumor that's visible. Right. Uh, I don't. I've never, I don't know if I've ever operated on a guinea pig before. Um, I don't really even remember what diseases guinea pigs get. But hypovitaminosis C, I think. And I don't think there's a surgical treatment for that. So, Pododermatitis. Get a of that for me, please. They can start on my next one, please. Could you just let them know that they can start on my next one? Let me just retract back now. Thank you. Please. Yep. 
person that was asking about the uh, guinea pig dad video went out when you answered. I think I just wanted to repeat that. Uh, you know, okay. I, I don't know anything about guinea pigs. Sorry. Um, question about if I have any advice on Sergio and guinea pigs. Um, and I really don't know anything. So I'm of no use whatsoever. That being said, um, the same tenets I'm sure would apply, which would be good um, hemostasis, uh, delicate soft tissue handling, imaging beforehand. So there's branch of the sciatic nerve right there. And if you guys can see that right in there. So that's a big branch of sciatic nerve. And that would probably be going down to the gastroc muscle. And there's a branch of it that's coming into the muscle that we've excised. Uh, I think your head was in the way, Jeff. Just watching out for that sciatic nerve there. So really good question. If clean margins are achieved, we won't do radiation because radiation is purely a local disease treatment. Um, but given the fact that it's a subcutaneous hemangiosarcoma, there's some potential for secondary spread. And so this patient is going to have chemotherapy in the form of doxorubicin. Can we get some um, mepivacaine, please? So just to review, gastroc there, biceps muscle there, sciatic nerve there. I think... This is probably semitendinosis right here that we've taken a bit of the fascia on as well. And this will close really nicely. So we'll close the muscle together first, across like this, over the top there to that muscle fascia. That's fascia lata right there. And then we'll just do an intradermal layer. Uh, as far as I know, you have to take the GRE. You cannot take the MCAT. MCAT is specific for medical school. Uh, so when I got into vet, granted this was 34 years ago, yikes, um, I had to take the GRE. Any other questions or comments while we're waiting for our mepivacaine? Have you done surgeries for bone tumor? Have I ever? Um, so bone cancer is mostly going to be osteosarcoma, and I've done about a probably a thousand to twelve hundred um, osteosarcoma surgeries in dogs, ranging from limb salvage surgery to amputation to maxillectomies to mandibulectomies digital amputations, all kinds of things. So um, we've done tons of, uh, tons of bone cancer surgery. And in fact, I think I might have a YouTube video on osteosarcoma and prognostic factors and treatment options and stuff like that if you have a look for that. Question about the VCAT and why it was removed. I have no idea. Um, I actually didn't know anything about the VCAT. Um, I've taken out a lot of the flexors before. You can you can take out quite a bit without any effect on function. Um, and so, like, you can take out the entire biceps muscle. You can definitely take out one head of the gastroc, if not the majority of another half. Semi-mems and semi-tens you can definitely take out as well. Can I get some 2 OPDS, please? Unrelated question. In cats that need... Mastectomy, do you prefer medical? Oh, okay, so I like to stage my radical mastectomies. 
close that muscle fascia like that. Mm -hmm. And then just an intradermal. You just want that continuous? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So once you get down to once you get down to here, see if I don't know if you'll be able to pull that across or not. You may be able to only do that, and then we'll just have to do. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably going to be mostly just an intradermal. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So I'll come over and have a look at the chat and make sure that there aren't any questions that I haven't answered. And I should be streaming something else later today as well. I've got a few other tumors to do and stuff like that. So um, are you guys in a show any particular practice protocols? So um, regarding COVID-19, we are certainly concerned about it. We are making sure that people are washing their hands a lot. We've gotten rid of all of our reusable like towel, cloth towels in the practice, and we've gone just to paper towels requested that people that have any kind of respiratory signs go home. We've pretty much eliminated international travel. Um, we have requested that clients that have respiratory signs either not come in or um, that they let us know and wear a mask. Um, what else have we done? That's the majority of it. Um, anybody who's traveled internationally has to self-quarantine for two weeks. Uh, anybody who has any potential risk of exposure has to self-quarantine until they're tested negative, um, those types of things. Regarding the number of surgical specialists, I think there are probably about 30 different types of surgical specialists. So you'd go from small animal surgery, large animal surgery, um, small animal medicine, large animal medicine, cardiology, um, uh, feline medicine, uh, neurology, uh, farm animal, exotics, anesthesia, all kinds of different things. So there are several different um, different types or different varieties of surgical specialists in veterinary medicine. Um, anyway, so we'll go ahead and leave it at that. Um, so just to review, uh, Jeff is suturing the semitendinosus and the biceps femoris muscle right there. Um, so... Um, that's the answer to the question from before. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope to be streaming something else again later on today. Um, and I will be in touch soon.